What's up, guys? I'm Anthony, and welcome to Life with Anthony. Happy Sunday to you guys. I hope that you guys are having a great weekend. Today, I wanted to sit down and have like an extended conversation of the video that I put out about two weeks ago, Retire at 62 or 67. After I made that video, I went on the Social Security uh, website, and I created an account, and I was able to access my entire work history, the year, and the dollar amount of each year. I must say that I was a little surprised <laughs> at my beginning work years. Maybe it's because I didn't recollect, but when I think about it or thought about it, I was when I started into the printing industry, that's basically where I kind of confirmed my, my, my work and my career is when I started the printing uh, industry, which was 1989. I was only making five dollars and some change, so I don't know what I was expecting to see in terms of the dollar amount, but it wasn't what I <laughs> thought it would be. So it actually took me about 11 years into the printing industry to start making uh, around $45,000, dollars consistent, so <clears throat> it wasn't as good as I thought it was. Now, when it comes to what they projected me to be making if I retire at 62, um, that number was a little disheartening to me, but at the same time, I'm glad that I now know that number because now I can think of how I want to live my life after retirement based on that number. But I do have a question for you guys, and maybe you know you can answer it for me. Instead of me having to go through the whole <laughs> calling Social Security and going through all that madness sometimes that it takes to get through to a person. And that question is, now the number that I see that they projected for me to have or make or roundabout make uh, at 62, is that number based on what I have already done up until this point? Because I have seven more years to work before I turn 62. And if I stay on the job that I'm on now, I'm pretty certain that I'm going to be making fifty plus thousand dollars. Those next seven years are going to replace the lowest seven years for that for my thirty five years that Social Security uh, used to calculate your monthly income. So uh, my reasoning for asking is because that could potentially raise the number that I see that they projected that I'm going to make or is that the number that they I don't know how else to put it unless they is assuming that I'm going to make a certain amount of money and they came up with that number if that question makes any sense and you understand what I'm trying to ask and you have some input on that um, <clears throat> let me know what you think okay so now that I projectively know what I'm going to be making at age 62, um, I thought about some ways that I can possibly live. Now, of course, the number one uh, thing that came to my mind is the whole van life. I think van life for retirement is an excellent way to go. Um, it is a money-saving way, you know. It's the best way to, to, to go in terms of money um, and when I thought about that I thought okay how would I do that one of the ways that stuck out or came to me was that I could buy a travel trailer and put on the back of my already small SUV that I have and call it a day you know then I can uh, have the choice of getting a actual mobile home. Um, I've been checking out Facebook, and Facebook have like, you know, a few that were on there, you know. So I know that they are available if that's the route I want to go. Um, those are my two options. Now, when it comes to travel trailers, there are two types. There are the teardrops, and uh, which is basically a sleeping area. And some of them may have a little bit of cabinetry where you can put some clothes in. And they mostly are known to have the back kitchen. You flip up the back and you got your outdoor kitchen. 
Now, a normal trailer, trailer, travel trailer has are a little bigger, and they have your indoor, your shower, the your, your dinette, and you know, basically everything you need. You know, now the biggest difference between the travel trailer and a, I say a regular size travel trailer is um, there's a cost difference because you can get a teardrop. Now I have seen two different models of teardrops that you can actually stand in but I don't know the availability of those teardrops and if they're actually sold in my city or that type of thing but they do have two types of what are considered teardrops that you can stand up in if I wanted to look into that or do some research into that but <laughs> ideally if I would go that route I would probably just go for the I don't know I don't know it's hard to say right now and I'll just leave it at that that those will be my two choices a teardrop versus a regular size travel trail now the price difference I can get a teardrop probably for under 10 grand Whereas a regular travel trailer, they can run you up to, if New Camp is probably the, the best uh, travel trailer company out there, manufacturer out there. But they are really expensive. I mean, they have travel trailers up like 40 grand. And I'm like, oh no, I will not be doing 40 grand for a travel trailer. <laughs> so it, it, it gives me something to think about. Now, my other option, which is not as cost-efficient as getting a travel trailer or a uh, pod in be behind me, would be, I couldn't even think of the name of it, uh, a travel trailer, <laughs> oh God, is to um, try to get into a senior citizen complex. But the thing about getting into a, now, the thing about getting into a senior citizen complex would be, it's still going to be a little costly. Even if they're going by your income, you're still going to have the traditional other bills, your utilities, your cable, and all of that, all of those things. So it's not as nowhere near as cost efficient as going into a travel trailer or something, or even a mobile home. So, but the best part about a uh, senior citizen complex is that you can apply for them anywhere that they have them. You don't have to only apply for a senior citizen complex that's in your city. So if I no longer wanted to deal with winter weather, I could apply for one in Florida. At least that's what I believe. I don't think there are any restrictions on you applying for a senior citizen complex outside of your city. So that would be my other option. So. Those are basically my own only two options, you know, at at this stage of the game and at the time that I have before I actually retire. I am definitely going to retire at 62 um, because I, I don't even feel like working now. <laughs> to be quite honest, I don't feel like working anymore right now. <laughs> But definitely 62 is going to do it for me, and I'm so glad that I tapped into the Social Security and have an idea of what it is that I'm going to projectively getting so I can actually now plan for it. Ideally, if I choose the mobile uh, route or a travel trailer, um, I would love to get it before I retire. I would love to have it paid for before I retire because the extra money that I make during each year with overtime and everything, I can be using some of that money to pay for a travel trailer. But here's what I would ask you guys because I have two concerns about getting a travel trailer. I would actually love to get a travel trailer and get out of this apartment a few years ahead of retiring. But here's the two concerns I have about doing that. The first one is most travel trailers are not built for winter. You know, this is what I've been hearing. This is what I've been, you know, researching. And I kind of Googled or went on YouTube and said, you know, are there any travel trailers that, you know, built for winter? 
But what does that mean, though, that, it, that, it, that they're not built for winter? Because to me, if you have a roof vent and windows, you can put a heater in there, like a, uh, one of those Mr. M My Buddy heaters or something. So I'm not sure what they mean. I mean, what, are the walls going to fall down or, or deteriorate under uh, cold conditions? <laughs> I don't know exactly what does that mean. Uh, it could mean that they're not insulated properly for winter conditions. That's what I think it probably means. But again, put a heater in there or something. And the other concern I have about it is having just having a, a travel trailer daily behind me. I have not seen a one travel trailer in this town. And for me to show up with a travel trailer that I'm towing around on my daily basis, I think that would be kind of odd looking. <laughs> I think that would kind of stand out. <laughs> Can you imagine me going to work every night, pulling a travel trailer behind me? <laughs> Can you imagine me driving to the grocery store, going to the gas station, all my little daily little things, which is not a lot of daily things. I don't be, it's not like I'm out and about every day and current on. But can you just imagine that? What are your thoughts on that? Would you, would you feel comfortable driving around in, uh, in your vehicle with a travel trailer behind you in a small town that you have not even seen that one travel trailer yet? <laughs> that would be <laughs> I can see people, I don't know, people might be, like, intrigued by it, you know? I, I just don't know, but I guess it's it's all about my comfort level. And I can see the people reaction on my job when they come out of work and see all of a sudden I got a travel trailer behind me. <laughs> that would be sad. But, you know, and then I could just, you know, say, who who the F cares? Who cares, you know? But in a small town like this, I don't need to be pulled up by the police because I rarely see police around, but I have seen them enough to know that they are around in this small town. You know, that's all I need is for some police to be pulling me up, ask me what's going on, and yada, yada, yada. But those are my two concerns about that. Well, anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, I'm glad that I now know what I'm dealing with. Unlike a lot of people who have no idea how much money they're going to get from Social Security until they get much closer to that time. But I have seven years to plan for it, save for it, decide which way I want to definitely go when that time comes. And I feel good about where I am right now since now that I know that information. I will continue to check my Social Security website my page, um, mainly around tax season when the new new year has been added to my work history. I want to see if that increased my uh, projected monthly rate or not. Alright guys, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. Um, if you have any thoughts on today's uh, content for the video, feel free to uh, let me know and share it in the comment section. Also, don't forget to head over to the community page and fill out this week's poll questions. And that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you guys for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys. You know that. And I'll see you guys the next time.